Okay, what you're seeing here is the actual screenshot of the previous video. And we're looking at the uh, what's called PLC view for the Teco model. This is exactly what I see on the front of the PLC. I can see my inputs are all true right now, one through six. And if I look at my other inputs, everybody's true there too. And it has to do with syncing and sourcing. I'm not gonna get into that, but you have to be careful how you wire your PLC to the DAC box to interface with this software. So because of the way we have our PLC wired, we have to invert both inputs and outputs. They're inverted. <clears throat> We're going to go off with the sound because there's all kinds of sound effects. We don't want that. And we don't want to go full screen because if you do that, then you're going to block everything that you're seeing here. <clears throat> So we're going to fire up the sorting uh, simulation, and you'll notice when it kicks in that all my inputs just went false, except for two, seven and eight there. We'll go. We'll take a look at those two. Get in the front of the screen here. See, seven and eight are true. Now uh, here's why. I'll go into auto mode to kick in our. Here's some push buttons. Eight is this big emergency stop, which is wired normally closed in the real world. So if I push it, it should then go open, and you could see that it did. I'm gonna push my stop button, that's input seven, and you can see that that went away. And if I push my start and hold it, that's input six, and I actually have a program running, we'll take a look at that. It says when input six goes true, trigger Q1. Well, Q1 is actuator zero in my uh, simulation, and that is this conveyor that feeds boxes up to this section. And this light, this indicator light, will notify us that that conveyor is running. So if I push start and hold it, you saw the light change. You can see the box coming up. On the real PLC, output four, or I'm sorry, output one is triggered, Q1. And now let's change our camera angle to zoom in on where that box is. And I'm going to push the front arrow key to move in. And input two says actually two and three are true. If I click on sensors, I can see all my sensors and I can see that one and two are true. And that's because this box is high enough to touch or activate both of those proximity sensors. Now I'm gonna physically move the box and you just saw those two sensors cleared and they cleared on here as well. So that's how interactive this whole system is.